chapter 19 in Job. Michelle, what we do is we kind of read these scriptures around, and if you're not comfortable reading, it's perfectly uh -huh. all right to skip if you want. If you no. want to join in, just join in, okay? Okay. And uh, I'll be here. We'll start with you. I don't think you got to read last week, so I hate to cheat you out of a blessing uh -huh. there. We'll start with you this week. Okay. Read uh, through six. One through six. And Job answered and said, How long will you torment my soul and break me in pieces with these with words? These ten times you have reproached me, you are not ashamed that you have wronged me. And if indeed I have erred, my errors remain with me. If indeed you exalt yourself against me and plead my disgrace against me, know then that God has wronged me and has surrounded me with his net. Uh, you know, now, Job is, what happened to Job? What's, what's Job's problems? Sickness torment him. He's been he's sick with sores and things, isn't he? How many friends did he have come see him? Three. Uh, three friends come. So, uh, friends. Were friends. <laughs> well, they real friendly? <laughs> Are these friends friendly friends? <laughs> they probably were friendly friends, but since Satan has the power from God to test Job, and it seems to me like Satan is taking these three friends and using them to <clears throat> test Job, you know, to try to get Job to go away from God. <clears throat> now, normally, these three friends might not have uh, been this rough on Job, but because they're, he's in a test, they're railing him all the time. And, and it, in this it says, verse 3 says, In these ten times have you reproached me. So... So they, he's Job's keeping track. <laughs> he know these these friends have been approaching. Job, Job here com, is actually complaining to the to his friends, and uh, there uh, in verse eight, chapter eighteen, Bildad had been talking about uh, you know to rebuking Job, re, you know, going, telling Job all the things he had done and what's going to happen to all the wicked people. And so Job comes back and he's in verse 2 he says, How long will you vex my soul or how long will you torment me? So Job's question is, friends, they're pretty good. And what is break, in, break me in pieces? What, what are they, how would his friends be breaking him in pieces? What are they doing to him? Down. Yeah, they're, they're accusing him of stuff and that he didn't do and stuff, and they're, and they're, and they're, and in these these words, these evil words that they're using against him and telling him, you know, you must have done something or you would have still had your riches and all this kind of stuff, and you would have still had your family if you hadn't have done something. They're they're using e these evil approaches and these evil words to that are actually trying to break him down. And Job is getting, he's, he's wising up. He's not a dummy, not by any means. And so he's, he's saying, how long are you going to do this? <laughs> you know, how long are you going to keep this up? He said, 10 times in verse 3, you've, uh, you've reproached me. You are not ashamed that you make yourself strange to me. So this is different behavior for his friends. Normally his friends are probably friendly. You know, but in this case, they come over there and Satan's using them to attack him. And if your friends ever turn against you, what do you feel like? Rejected, don't want, not unwanted. It don't feel good when you, you know, if you have somebody you consider a close friend and that friend re turns on you, you know, that would be the same setting that Job's in. And, and, then, and then these friends are, are, they're really railing on him. You know, they're, he's sitting there sick, got sores with worms in his skin and all this kind of stuff. And he, and they're still, you know, they're not saying, hey, can I get some balm and put on there and fix those sores or anything like that. They're just letting him go through it. And then, uh, verse 4 there, 
says, And be indeed that I have erred, my error remaineth within myself. What is he what is he saying there? Indeed I have erred. He said, Be it indeed that I erred. I'd be like if he's yeah. messed up, if he's sinned. If I really yeah, have I messed up. Did it. Right. Yeah, if I've messed up, if I've sinned, then it's still with me, right? That's what it, my error lodges with me, yes. Yeah, it remains in him. In him. So, I would think he's saying, like, it's his business. And that's that's what Ma said. It's my concern, not yours. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 like, it's like his his business. Stop judging me yourself. Yeah. 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 See, he's complaining oh to his gosh. friends. And so his friends, <laughs> he said, even if I had done this, that's still between me and God. You know, or between, mm -hmm. it's still within me. And... Uh, And verse, verse uh, uh, five says, "Indeed, you will magnify yourselves against me and plead against me. Know now that God hath overthrown me and hath compassed me with His net." Now, who, who is Job saying has done this to him? His friends or God? God. He's saying that God is doing it. See, Job now he recognizes where all this is coming from. He knows, he knows that God has left him alone. He's, he is, God has moved away from him. You know, and he, and so he says, "You guys didn't do this." He says, "You may magnify yourself, like tell about how much good things you still have." and claim you had not got anything going on, but it's actually God that allowed this to happen. And so Job is, he's, he's going along there these several days or whatever the time they've been, uh, been there together, and he's, he knows that God is testing him. He's figured that out if he didn't know it from the start. He, he's saying, God gave me these swords, and for some reason, you didn't give them to him. It wasn't done from other things. So, yeah. Read verse 7 there, uh, uh, Michelle. Read. Behold, I cry violence, but I get no answer. I shout for help, but there is no justice. Uh, what's, he, what's that cry out? What does he mean by crying out? Praise. What? Praise. Praying? What's he... With pleading. emotion, he's pleading. he's pleading, praying. Who's he praying to? His friends, or who's he calling God. on? God. <clears throat> he's calling on God. But what is he getting an answer? Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it says, but there is no judgment, right? <laughs> no, no justice. So, do you ever pray and feel like you didn't get an answer? Yeah. You ever, you ever had that? Gee, I just like. Talked in the open air or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Joe, he's he's saying they cries out, so that's probably in the case that he's pretty fervent, mm -hmm. you know, in his in his prayers and his in his request there. Autumn read eight and nine and ten. Me. Autumn. Oh. God has blocked my way, so I cannot move. He has plunged my path into darkness. He has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head. He has demolished me on every side, and I am finished. He has uprooted my hope like a fallen tree. All right, so who is, who's fenced him in? God. And who's made his paths dark? The devil. Or I don't know. That's confusing it's, me. Yeah, it's it's all. See, God put him in this situation, and and so he's he's telling his friends here, you guys didn't do this to me, but you need to lay off and I and quit doing this to me. And he's just doing a little lamentation here, uh, talking like like talking to himself or talking to the. He's trying to find just God. Just talking in 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 there. <clears throat> In verse ten, what uh, what state of well being does Job see himself? Done. He's, he's finished. 
he he, he sees himself as destroyed. Right. What did we study last week? He was he could have seen no way out except by how yeah. death. And so he's still he's still in that same mode. He can't see any way out except except that death. He said, "My life is over. It's done with." You know, and he figures he's in his last days here. Joy, read the 11. He has also kindled his wrath against me, and he counts me as one of his enemies. So, well, Job, what does Job feel like he is? God's enemy. Because <laughs> he's getting treated that way. Read 12 and 13, Daniel. And 13 and 14. Uh, 12 and 13. Uh, his troops came together and built up the road against me. They encamped far on my tent. He has removed my brothers far from me. And my acquaintances are completely estranged from me. Uh, so, so verse 11, he's, Job feels like he's, God is has cut him off and he feels like God put troops around him like he's he's got his, God's got his army around him and not letting anything any any good thing come toward him and uh, he hath put my brethren far from me what does that mean that's like his friends right relatives, yeah. relatives friends and and my acquaintances, people he knows. If you, you know, just people you'd normally say hi, how are you doing? When you walk down the street, they, they're not recognizing him, and they're not coming over there talking to him. They're going the other way, right? <laughs> they're avoiding him. So, his very his acquaintances and his and his brothers, the people that I guess you know, that could be like church members, something they brethren. It could be. People of that nature, you know. The brothers, would that not be the three friends that are constantly on? Well, that wouldn't be like relative brothers, and they might, you know, he's he's made a separate on them. And I think he's talking here about about just people in general that that he, you know, it'd be like us coming to church here. We consider ourselves brothers and sisters here, you know, and, and I'm, you know, and they have synagogues or they have places of worship. I think that brother and his people that he's he's a little closer than a than a passing friend, you know, but he's uh, but there and his just people that he's a passing friend with, which would be acquaintance, somebody he just knows that usually says hi, how you doing, and walks on down the street, you know, the. Uh, these people, none of these are talking to him. <laughs> no matter how close they are or how far away they are, they're still not talking to him. Let's, uh, uh, 14 says what, Stanley? My kin folks have failed in that my, my familiar friends have forgotten me. So he's feeling abandoned by everybody, isn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Read 15 through 18 there, Gary. Those who dwell in my house and my maidservants count me as a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I call my servant, but he gives no answer. I beg him with my mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife, and I am repulsive to the children of my own body. Even young children despise me. I arise and they speak against me. Right. Now, is Ken folks how would Ken folks fail somebody in this position? If you had an uncle and an aunt and a brother and a sister. That's the best thing to do is leave Ken folks alone. <laughs> Let me tell you all that, right? <laughs> but these, these Don't deal with Ken folks. <laughs> uh, come on in, girl. Uh, you'll be quiet and behave yourself down. <laughs> 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 We're in chapter 19 of Job. Job. The, uh, 18. 19. 19. 19. Couldn't catch Bill? Did I do it right? 
Bill? Uh, Michael. Michael? <laughs> Bill Zarago. I've got him in my mind as Bill. I, don't have to, I was thinking yesterday, I thought. I, 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 thought, I even turned Michael oh, over in my name, in my name, mind there yesterday. I got the... Michael. Michael. Yeah. Who's Bill? Uh, yeah. I don't know who that is. <laughs> but I've had, I've had time to husband that's Bill. He looks like he could be a Bill. <laughs> <laughs> he looks more like Bill than mine. Mm -hmm. Put that right up there, and I'll put a mark right there to remember that by. <laughs> we saw each other at the Dairy Queen, I mean, at the Sonic there yes. yesterday. Yes. And, and uh, met her sister. Yes. Yes. Chapter 19. Verse, where were we? 19. 19. 19. Now, all of his inward friends, what did they do? His inward friends, that would be what, close? Mm -hmm. Close friends, what did they do? Avoided him. Abhorred. That's what it says, abhorred. Abhorred. Oh, no. Ab abhorred. Abhorred. His friends mm -hmm. abhorred me. Abhorred. What does that? What does your translation say there? On eight to nineteen, uh -huh. my close friends detest me. Detested, yeah. And they whom I loved are turned against me. Everybody's down on Job, and Job has all these sores and things on him. And he was one of the most popular guys in the of all time and here everybody nobody's having nothing to do with him because he has these sores on him and now God put these sores on him because Satan is trying to is trying to prove that Job wouldn't stay true to God mm -hmm. if, if God didn't have his protection around Job then Job wouldn't stay true to God and so this test began between, and these friends came, and so Satan has permission to put the sores on Job, and he has permission to deal with Job during this time from God. And so this is why, and Job knows that God's allowing this, you know, now. He's figured out that all this, his problems is actually from God, but he hadn't figured out why. He don't know why God's turned against him. Like but, it's, to make sure he's but it's between it doesn't have really anything to do with Job it's, a, it's between God and Satan the test mm -hmm. is between God and Satan mm -hmm. and Job is caught in the middle but as we'll see here in just a minute Job hadn't wavered he's still staying true to God mm -hmm. even, in, even though all of his friends here has abandoned him and everything and we feel like our friends are abandoned us then who can we count on not to abandon. But he may not answer a prayer immediately or like that, but he may. He does sometimes. We had one answered yesterday, didn't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> answered on the spot. The uh, so when you if you're having a problem, best thing to do is pray, and then and then you can get a, you'll get a response most all the time. But Job here, he's being tested. So God has actually removed his protection and his his closeness to Job away. Mm -hmm. And Job knows God's not not as handy as he was. He's not as close. And so he feels this abandonment from God. And so but he's not giving up, as we'll soon see. All of his inward friends, his close friends, and that have, he that has who he's loved, they've all turned against him. He describes his flesh, my bones cleave to my skin and my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. He's just barely hanging on, and <laughs> he's just barely, barely alive as far as he's concerned. And so he pleads back with his friends in verse uh, 21 there, uh, Javier. Have pity on me, have pity on me, oh you that's right, right? 
Yeah. Oh, you, my friends, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you persecute me as God does? Are you not, and are you not satisfied with my flesh? All right. So, he, what is Job asking his friends to do? What is he asking from his friends? Have mercy on <clears throat> He's pleading again. He asks him first, why are you doing this stuff to me? Why are you persecuting me as God? You're treating me bad, you know? And so he first asked his friends, why are you doing this? And, uh, and why are not, why are you, you know, just nothing is satisfying these friends. He's answered them, he's talked to them, he's pled with them, he's, he's saying, hey, it had cut me some slack. And they haven't done it yet. And he's still saying, why are you doing this? And he's just asking them to have a little pity on him. Because all of his relatives, all of his friends, and every, uh, and everybody has abandoned him. So he's saying, you guys know me. You know, you all know me better than probably than most any of these others. And you still, a lot of times you are closer to friends than you are to relatives. You know. And, and so Job feels close to these guys, you know, but they're, each one of them is railing on him about his stuff. That's when he finds his leader, when he got sold all over you. <laughs> well, he got some, you get a bunch of warts on you, they'll, they'll walk across the street, won't they? <laughs> yeah, they would walk on the other side of the street, too. Michelle, you want to read uh, 23 and 24? Yeah. Oh, that my words are, were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book <clears throat> that with an iron, I don't know that word. Right. It, said, it starts with an S, but yeah. Right. An iron chisel, it, that's not what it says, yeah. yeah. And lead, or chisel and lead, yeah. but they were engraved in the rock forever. Why do you think Job wanted his words preserved? So people could read them. <laughs> so people could read his words. Mm -hmm. The uh, it says, "Oh, that my words are were written, and oh, that they were printed in a book." We don't. Sometimes they didn't have a book like we have necessarily a book, but they called it a book. It's scrolls, <laughs> but having a leaf book like this, they might have had pages, but they weren't. Like, like ours, they're probably bigger pages and you maybe connected with string between them, or, you know, holding them together and like that. But Job was, Job was wanting his, all of the things that's going on, he said, oh, that my words were right now written, that they were printed in a book. But even that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. He's wanting his words chiseled in stone where they won't escape. Why? I don't know. Why do you think? I don't know. Myself. So people wouldn't be treated like he was treated? He didn't want anybody else to be treated like he went, what he went through? I think you're pretty close. Anybody else have any opinions? Why would Job want his word? As a testimony? To stay, to stay true and stay yeah. right with God? Stay close with God? So they would know exactly. He wanted, he wanted it written down so his relatives, his friends, people, acquaintances, and, and anybody else that knew the story mm -hmm. would know what had transpired and what he had and how and what he had said and you know and he didn't want any doubt about what was going on and uh, with this next uh, the autumn 25 through 27 there but as for me I know that my redeemer lives and he will stand upon the earth at last and after my body has decayed, yet in my body I will see God. I will see him for myself. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. And I am overwhelmed at the thought. So what is Job voicing his 
here? What's he put? What's he talking about here? That he'll still see God. That God's still on his side. He still has God within him. And stuff. He's still he's still trusting God. So no matter what the circumstances here that Job has faced, and no matter how much adversary type stuff he's faced, he's still trusting God. And I think that's, you know, I don't know what Job thought when he's saying these words, and I didn't really find anything. The, uh, but I think that that's, he wanted them preserved, so he, like Joy said, we could see through his life even if we felt like God was totally against him and totally away, God's still there and our faith is still what's going to bring us to God. Job's faith is pretty strong and his strong is faith, his faith is strong enough that no matter the problems, no matter the, the uh, circumstance, he can see the resurrection and see himself still with God mm-hmm. after death. And that probably has a lot to do with why he wants to write it down because he wants people to see that no matter what happens to him or what he goes through or whatever, that, that God that is Christ still is there. Right there. And his faith is still strong. Right. See, and Satan, this is the whole thing. Satan is trying to get Job to lose his faith in God. Mm-hmm. But here we are, we're we're down 10, 10 times, 10, 10 railings down, according to Job. I didn't go back and count them, but it says 10 times you've got after, you've done this to me. So he's, he's heard this for 10 times. All of his friends, all of his relatives have abandoned him. Well, you know, that'd be kind of tough. You're standing alone and everybody pleading against you. That's hard, no doubt about that. So, but Job is staying strong. He's saying, he's saying, even after my body is destroyed, yet in my flesh I will still see God. So what about, what does that have something to do with resurrection, doesn't it? We've read some things about the, the resurrection. Verse 29 there, what did we get to? Read 28. But ye should say, why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me. He's just talking there about his friends. What did he want his friends to do? Still wanting a little what? Little support? Yeah. Still wanting some support Mm -hmm. from his friends. Mm -hmm. Verse 29 Joy, you want to read 29? Sure. Be afraid of the sword of yourself, for wrath brings the punishment of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. So what's he saying to his friends? They should be afraid. He's warning them, isn't he? He's, He's saying, don't worry about me. You need to be worried about yourself. Let's turn over and look up Matthew... Chapter 16, verse 27. Matthew what? 16. 16 in Matthew verse 27. 27. Joey, you got it? Yes, sir. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. So what is Jesus saying here about our our works? It will be rewarded according to what you do. Just according to what you do. So it just hold that place. So Job was warning his friends about what? About what's coming. About what's coming if they don't, you know, if they don't get things right. 
if they don't get right with God and they don't start doing the right things, then uh, they're going to be judged for the things they do and say. That's what it's telling us here. You know, we need to to uh, say things, be, be aware of what we're saying, and be aware of our actions. Is it time to go? No, not quite. Uh, 2 Corinthians, turn, turn to your right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and not far after Acts is 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians. What? Chapter five. Five. Ten. Ten. Did you mess out of fear? Chapter four. The judgment set of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to the to thee that. He has just done, whether it be good or bad. Is that it? That is it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat. Where else did we read about a judgment seat? What's going to happen when you face with the judgment seat? Heaven or hell. Huh? Heaven or hell. Mm-hmm. Pretty much whether, it's going to, whether you've done bad or good, you're going to be standing there before God. Okay. Uh, turn over to Revelations 20, 12. Over the last, last book, close to the end of the New Testament. Revelations 20, 12. Gary, you got it? Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Hmm. So who's keeping these records? God. So is what we do or say or how we act, is it important? I would think so. I think how we act and what we do, because uh, there is a little record being kept on activities. And so, if we're friends with each other, uh, and we treat them like Job's friends are treating him, that's going to be written down, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But if we're, you know, if we're treating them friends like we ought to treat a friend, is that going to be disregarded? No. And be written down too. So we've got kind of a checks and balance things going on with the Lord, and he wants he, Job didn't have one thing that we have. Job had could pray and talk. But what do we have that Job didn't have? The Bible. That's one thing. The, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit the, is what we have. Job had some written parchments and stuff. It wasn't the Bible like we have, but he had he had some scrolls and things that access to. But he didn't have the Holy Spirit. And we get the Holy Spirit through our salvation and through Christ. Correct. And we have him living inside of us to help us decide how to do and how to conduct ourselves. And so if we'll put ourselves under His direction and pray, like it says, without ceasing, when we start to do something, we pray and we ask for His help, His strength. Then in praying for that as we're going, then we have a helper to help us through those difficult times. Our job is to do like Job. Job's faith did not waver in the face of all this torment and trials and stuff. 
neglect and rejection. He, the, he didn't say, okay, forget it. I'm going with them. You know, he stayed with God. And so our job is to stay with God and try, keep on trusting Him. Terry, you want to lead us in a prayer? Father, we thank you for the lessons that you bring us, Lord. We thank you for this day. Just ask now that you be with Tim as he brings your message and be with each and every one of us as we go into the preaching hour. And these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.